This video is going to cover a topic that it is essential you know for the GRE and the GMAT, and that's two types of wordy fraction questions. You are very likely to see a question like this on your GRE and or GMAT test. What do I mean? Take a question like this. 15 students in a class finished a math test on time, and the remaining two-sevenths of the students in the class finished the test late. How many students finished the test in total? Now, many of you might actually find that quite confusing to work out. And just to give you a hint, the reason why you're finding it confusing is because the first part of the sentence gave us an amount, 15 students, and the second half of the sentence gave us a fraction. It talked about the remaining two sevenths of the students. And that's conflicting information in a way. It's confusing an amount with a fraction, so what do we do? The secret to this type of wordy fraction question is, as I've written below, if we know the remaining fraction, we also know the existing fraction. What do I mean by that? You know when it said the remaining two sevenths of the students? Well, if those are the remaining two sevenths, what fraction does the 15 students represent? The 15 students must be the five sevenths of the class. They're the five sevenths, and then you have the remaining, the other two sevenths. What am I trying to say? We can make an equation between the amount of students, 15, and what fraction of the total they represent, which is five sevenths of the total. That's the secret. I know the question never said that those 15 students were five sevenths of the total. They only gave you the two sevenths. You have to work out the inverse. If that was in any way confusing, I've got another example coming up for you to practice. But what do we do once we have that equation? Well, we can give the total a letter, like x or t, and write it like this. 15 equals 5 sevenths of t. Now, first priority, let's get rid of the fraction. How would we do that? by multiplying both sides by the denominator. Multiply both sides here by seven, and you get 105 equals 5t. And now we can simply divide by five to find out what t, which is the total, was. There must have been 21 students in total. That's 15 that finished it on time, and two sevenths of 21, which is six, who finished it late. So the math checks out. As I say, before we move on to the next example though, the key thing you have to remember is making an equation between the amount they give you and the fraction that that amount represents. Let's try a harder example. If you want, pause the video, try this one yourself and see if you get it right. Two thirds of the vegetables in a bag are damaged. That often happens to me to be honest when I get it delivered. If eight vegetables in the bag are undamaged, how many vegetables would be thrown away if three quarters of the damaged vegetables are thrown away? Notice even more words here. So it's even more of a wordy fraction question. Again, they've given us a fraction and an amount. But what fraction does that amount equal? If we know that two thirds of the vegetables are damaged, what fraction are undamaged? That would be one third. So one third are undamaged. Therefore, those eight vegetables that are undamaged must equal one third of the total. And that's the equation we write down. The eight vegetables that are undamaged must be one third of the total if two thirds are damaged. Again, we can write that with algebra. So eight equals one third T. And again, as before, we can multiply both sides by three to find the total. So there were 24 vegetables in the bag. Some of you will point out something smart to me and say to me, Philip, we don't actually want the total here. The question was asking about throwing away damaged vegetables. So we just want to know how many damaged vegetables there are. And those students might point out that if eight equals a third of the total, and we know two thirds of the total are damaged, we just double that. If eight is one third, then 16 is two thirds. So 16 are damaged. 
But if any student found that smart explanation confusing, they can just rely on this simple method on screen. Once we've worked out the total is 24, then we just work out two thirds of that to deduce how many are damaged. Two thirds of 24 is 16. So either way you do it, you work out that 16 were damaged. That's not the end of the question though, as you might have noticed, it said three quarters of the damaged vegetables are thrown away. So we work out three quarters of 16, you can either do that in your head or divide by four then times by three, and you get 12. So we had 12 vegetables being thrown away. But all of it came down to setting up that initial equation. Eight equals a third of the total, making the amount equal a fraction. Now hopefully you've all understood how to do this type of wordy fraction question. So we're gonna end on a different type of wordy fraction question now. Here it is. If six is x quarters of 16, and x is a fifth of y, y equals what? Again, feel free to pause the video, try this out yourself first, or you can wait to hear my explanation. The reason I included this is that it's kind of a strange way of phrasing the question. And I've seen this come up in the real test and in the guides. So I want to cover how to understand this question. When they say six is x quarters of 16, what they mean is, as I've written down below, six is what multiplied by a quarter of 16. In other words, you first must find a quarter of 16. A quarter of 16 is four. So what they're really asking you is six is how many times bigger than a quarter of 16? Six is how many times bigger than four? That's what they're asking you when they say six is x quarters of 16. Six is how many times bigger, x times bigger than four? Well, let's work that out. Six is what times four? You might be able to do that in your head and say 1.5, or you could just do six divided by four on a calculator to get 1.5. Either way, we get 1.5. So we can say that six is 1.5 quarters of 16. You may want to rewatch that bit because that's a lot of words, a lot of fractions, but that's how to understand what they mean. Strange way of phrasing it, but basically they just want you to work out a quarter of 16 and then find out how many times bigger than that is the number six. Anyway, it turns out X is 1.5, but the question's not quite over. It said X is a fifth of Y, meaning 1.5 is a fifth of something. If 1.5 is a fifth of something, that something Y must be five times bigger than 1.5. That's how to translate that. You could write an equation if you want, 1.5 equals one fifth times Y, or you could just realize in your head that if 1.5 is a fifth of y, then y is five times bigger. So you just do 1.5 times five. Either way, you work out y is 7.5. And you have now understood and covered two of the ways they can give you wordy fraction questions in the test. And this definitely comes up. So I really hope it made sense. Please do let me know in the comments.